attracting the attention of watch enthusiasts worldwide. This year's timepieces and models showcased the Black Bay 54 Tudor release, a dive watch with contemporary features that drew heavily from historical watch masters like Rolex. However, judging by the increased features, comforts, and appearance, the Rolex-inspired watch is actually evolving into a challenge to Rolex themselves as students develop into masters. Watch our video till last to get the whole view. On the surface, it's a common misconception to assume the Black Bay 54 to be 54mm in diameter. Well, it's not. The name Black Bay 54 not unlike the Black Bay 58, comes from the year of the watch that inspired it in lieu of the case size. The Black Bay 54 measures 37mm encased in stainless steel, making it a traditional size for anyone who's looking for a mid-size dive watch. With 37mm being a rare find nowadays, thanks to other larger variants. Tudor's approach with this size is nothing less than commendable, and it kind of makes us wonder if it'll inspire other brands to show smaller ones as well. Well, here's to open. The Black Bay 54 apart from Rolex, draws it inspiration from Tudor's very first dive watch, the Tudor Submariner reference 17922, which was released back in 1954, a year after the worldwide release of the Rolex Submariner. The Tudor Submariner had a 37mm case, a lollipop second hand, a no-date automatic movement, and an attractive symmetrical timing bezel with zero graduate hash mark. Now, taking a look at the Black Bay 54 in comparison, you can see how they took the style keys from the previous iteration, down to the last minute details such as the crown and the bezel dimensions. However, when you take a closer look, you'll notice quite a few differences such as 54 variant being 2mm smaller across the case, and the crown and bezel sporting is somewhat more vintage design, with them coming with slightly chunkier teeth in comparison to the hardware on the 58. Small but interesting detail lies in 54 losing the triangle at 12, alongside the glid printing like its predecessor, but instead, going for a classic and clean silver look. The glid dial printing is not the only thing that's similar on these watches, as the golden hour and minute hands follow through as well. However, the Black Bay 54 went for more of a Rolex-inspired lollipop seconds and instead of the 58 signature snowflake style. You can get both Tudor watches on a River Red style stainless steel 3-link oyster bracelet. However, the 54 comes to Tudor's very own on-the-fly adjustable T-fit clasp, which you won't find on the 58. But if that does not fill you fancy, the 54 is also available on a black rubber strap that again resembles the Oyster of Express that from Rolex that comes fitted with the T-Fit clasp. Apparently, a lot of these changes are inspired by Rolex, interesting and definitely something to think about. Now, for hardware, the Black Bay 54 comes powered by Tudor's manufactured Calibre MT5400 which is a COSG certified chronometer that has a power reserve of about 70 hours. The movement functionality is almost identical to the MT5402 movement from Black Bay 58, albeit a bit smaller in size. And finally, in terms of protection, the Black Bay 54 features 200 plunk mass of water resistance, but then again it's supposed to be a dive watch. So, no surprises there. Now, with all that, it's obvious to take Tudor might actually bring out another Submariner, but it seems pretty unlikely considering how the Submariner brand is gatekept by Rolex themselves. If Tudor wants to play the student who became the master, they are on the right track. But in our opinion there are still ways to go. The Tudor Black Bay 54 retails for $3,850 on the bracelet, which is about 100 bucks cheaper than the Black Bay 58. If you prefer the rubber strap, you can get the watch for a bit cheaper chipping in at $3,625. On the other hand, the price of a Rolex Submariner ranges from $9,100 up to $42,000. So, in terms of price, Tudor could be a very viable option as a Rolex alternative. However, Rolex was as and will be holding an iconic position in the market for years to come, and they don't plan on leaving anytime soon. That was all about the Tudor Black Bay 54. Do you favor the recent 54 or the more dated conventional 58? The most essential question is, how competitive with brands like Rolex do you think these watches are or could be? Please do tell us, we'd love to hear from you.
Additionally, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. If you want to see more material like this on your feed, click the bell icon.